What's something that's secretly been great about the pandemic? Save money on gas. Not to mention wasting time just sitting in a traffic jam to get to a desk that I also happen to have in the office at home. This. I don't miss the commute at all. Got back at least an hour a day because of this. 2x 15 minutes every day here. Loving it. Home office equipment and the coffee is also way better than my actual office. So no regrets other than not meeting people I work with. 190 miles a day cut out for me. Don't think I can go back. Not dealing with a commute. I got 6 to 8 hours a week back in commuting time. That's like about a whole extra work day every week that's mine to do with as I please. It's been incredible. And I hadn't realized how stressed my commute makes me. I don't have to be careful not to forget anything before I leave for work or when I'm leaving the office at the end of the day. I don't have to pack lunch. I don't have to make sure I'm dressed for the weather both now and in 8 hours when I'm coming home. I don't have to get wet when I get that wrong. And I don't have to spend a day at work with my shoes and socks wet. Or all of me wet. I don't have to wait at a bus stop for 40 minutes waiting for a bus that should have been here 30 minutes ago. This is 100% correct. The benefits of working from home have been amazing. More free time and more money in my pocket. A few years ago I went from commuting for 10 to 15 hours a week, 60 to 90 minute drive one way, to a 2, 5 hour weekly commute, 15 minutes one way. The impact this had on my mental health was drastic. Not to mention how much time, energy, and money I saved. A lot of restaurants have really up their online ordering and drive through game. Like a well oiled machine. And some shockingly haven't. I got takeout from one of my favorite restaurants the other day. And it took so long to order on the phone. That next time I'm just going to go down there and place an order in person. I had to speak to three different people to accomplish it. Being put on hold each time. And give my credit card over the phone. And before you ask. Yes. They advertise takeout on their website and menu. So it isn't as if it's a service they don't normally provide. The place I work is one of the places that hasn't for sure. We used to have people up front with dedicated positions. Taking orders. Bagging to go. Etc. But corporate panicked and are forcing managers to schedule less people. Then add to that doing way more curbside and phone orders there are just too many things to do and not enough people. During lunch there's a line of people. Phone rings now you have to stop taking orders from them. Order comes up you have to bag it. Phone rings during bagging you have to answer it. Oh it's someone curbside so now you have to finish bagging the order you're already doing. Find and take out the curbside order. Then finally come back in to help the understandably unhappy guy that walked up to your register 4 minutes ago. Somehow saving a couple hours of labor is worth loads of unhappy customers and overworked employees though. I have a similar issue at my place. I'm a shift lead, but my employees and even other shift leads have started just leaving the phone on the line because we just don't have enough hands to manually put through app orders, make them deal with pickups and walk-in customers and work on our closing tasks. I've been pulling two-man closes at least three times a week. When I've been recommending at least three to keep our head above water. It's incredible how bad some restaurant owners are at running their business. If your employees are straight up refusing orders because they're understaffed, then you're losing a lot more money in revenue than you're saving by paying one or two fewer workers. Not to mention the long-term loss of customers due to bad experiences and ratings. People finally washing their hands. Not seeing your toxic coworkers. Cries in hospital worker the toxic ones became more insufferable. Since they are some of the only people I see now. Ugh for real. I'm so jealous of all the WFH people. Because working in a hospital has been awful the past year. I started therapy last year. Because the stress surrounding everything. And living alone haven't been a good mix. I started back in school last May. But other than stress, college in a pandemic has kind of been a boon for me. I'm ready to graduate and GTFO of hospital work. I'm over it. <laughs> Cleaner beaches and ocean in Hawaii as millions of tourists stayed home. Of course the economy went to shti. But the aloha back quote in a prospered and way less traffic on the morning. Commute on the H1. I got to spend a lot more time with aging pets. 
I had to put down a cat this fall, but for 7 months he got to lay on my keyboard and interrupt zoom calls all day. I also have a 12 year old lab, and spending this year with her all day every day has been awesome. Me too. 3 wiener dogs. All 15. I lost them all in a 4 month period, but got to love on them so much more. If it wasn't for the pandemic, my dad would be dead right now. He likes to come over to our place while I'm at work and spend time with my dogs. My papillon got away from him and wanted to play chase in our garage, which is basically a storage unit right now, and she was bobbing and weaving through boxes when he caught her and took her inside. He noticed he was having a hard time catching his breath. My brother, who lives with me, offered to let him use his new oxygen meter, which he bought after he developed some temporary sleep apnea after he had covered. The meter was frighteningly low, so he told our dad to go to the walk-in clinic. They told him, as soon as he explained his oxygen level, that he needed to go to the ER. He tests negative for covered at the ER, but they found multiple blood clots in his lungs. They kept him a few days in the hospital, and he made a complete recovery with no permanent damage. I know my dad very well. Under normal circumstances, he would have gone home, tried to relax, gone to bed that night, and possibly never woken up the next morning. But COVID has us all on high alert, especially when it comes to breathing troubles. I never thought I'd be thankful for it also. After he got out of the hospital, he gave said papillon an extra special doggy treat for saving his life apostrophe similarly if not for remote doctors and virtual visits i would have let a potentially bad infection fester i was too embarrassed for years to see a practitioner in person and while the infection was very recent i was dreading an appointment and then like angels heralding on high i got an email from my insurance about scheduling remote consultations i've now talked to more doctors this year on my own than ever before and even made some progress with a therapist. Playing board games with my teenage kids. We got away from it as they got older. I still kick ass on Scrabble. But they smoke me on backgammon. Ticket to ride is a blast. Yahtzee too. I have two teens. And a spouse. We really enjoy spoons and bullshit. Easy. Fast pace card games. We also play blackjack as a family. We have a whole set of cards and chips. We keep a running tally of our chips on paper. My husband gets so mad because our daughter plays her gut and he plays by the rules and she is like a fake billionaire now and he's always panhandling for fake money to get him back in the game. It's a riot. Our son is always the dealer. Our casino is named after him and it's a good exercise in social skills and self-control. My kids are younger, 8 and 5, but we have been playing a ton of checkers. Beginner's chess, you know. A few other little kid games, but the clear champ of the pandemic has been aggravation. We were introduced to it over the summer, and have played it so 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 many times. It's great because young kids can easily play, but you can also play it over drinks, in my case with my wife, her sister and sister's husband, they're in our pod. It's got just enough strategy to keep it interesting, and you can play while pretty drunk, believe me on that. But it's also easy to grasp for young kids and teaches them some basic strategy and counting. I've been recommending it to our all our friends. I now permanently work from home. Which is amazing. Me prior to 2020 man getting a job working from home would be amazing. But I don't even know where to start me getting moved to permanently work from home due to covered oh ok well that works I guess. Pretty much any pre 2020 job listing. That said work from home was guaranteed to be a scam. Now here we are. Leaving the dream. In our sweet prints listening to music all day in our basements. My employer is still kicking the can down the road. Of whether we'll have to come back to the office when is over. I've been WFH for a solid year. I'm not going back to an office. Any business that doesn't continue to embrace the new reality is going to have trouble. If asked propose it from a money saving standpoint. Office has to provide space for X number of people and costs Y dollars. Current office has to provide space for zero number of people and costs zero dollars. How much does that add to the profit of the business not having to have office space, internet, electricity, etc. Why as a company are you choosing to negatively impact the bottom line to get the same amount of work done? 
this limits the funds for raises, and so many other things the company could do to benefit morale which would further boost production. It is also saving employees money so in a roundabout way they gave everyone a raise, by having them work from home, only to take it away for some outdated construct of real life office space. I'm a recovering alcoholic. Spending most of my time at home exploring my hobbies, attending virtual counseling, and rebuilding relationships with my loved ones has helped me to realize that no substance has ever given me so much contentment, and I honestly never want to give up what I have now. In 4 weeks, I will be celebrating my 2 year sobriety anniversary. The grass, underneath the foot of snow, has never seemed greener. Saved a lot of money not going out or traveling. Don't get me wrong. I'm not happy about it, and far other would have spent it. But I do have more money. Even just not commuting, saves a ton of money. I was paying 15 bucks a day on light rail, and parking at the station. And then buying crappy expensive lunch and coffee near the office. Now, I work at home. Where I eat my own food and drink my own coffee. I'm probably saving at least $150 a week. We are spending a lot more at the grocery store, but a lot less overall. Grocery stores are definitely the cheapest option for food. I haven't had a cold all year. Yeah this past year has probably been the healthiest I've ever been. Haven't ever had anything more than a minor headache. And that's usually just due to dehydration or something mundane. I started quarantine by becoming lactose intolerant for 6 months. You lucky bastard. I've developed a nice solid set of jerd and lactose intolerance. So being able to stay near a toilet has been the best part for me. I. Jerd crew in da house. I've had it all my life, but realized during the pandemic that apparently not everyone constantly burps and almost throws up after eating. And the random coughing I do at times during the night isn't normal. I'm missing a tooth fairly close to the front of my mouth and I don't feel self-conscious smiling in public when I'm wearing a mask. It's a silly thing. But I kinda miss real smiles. Thanks for the awards. Guys. My most liked slash commented comment is about my fucked up teeth. That's. Something. Lol. 1. I read missing a tooth fairy too. Same. 1. Me tooth. Without a social life. I've been forced to focus on myself instead of other people, so I've cut down on my drinking, lost 35 pounds, and started seeing a therapist. Here's hoping I come out of this in better physical and mental shape than I went in. No pressure to go somewhere on my days off. I don't feel like I'm wasting time when I have days off and don't spend them traveling or seeing people. I love staying at home and just hanging with my two cats. Sweatpants on. Messy bun. Junk food and games. I'm content with that. Yes. I think I have learned to accept my home body nature instead of feeling like I should be going out and doing things. There's nothing wrong with making a home for yourself and then enjoying being there. I agree. Your house is like all set up how you like it. Has all your favorite things in it. Ought to be climate controlled to your exact preferences. Is comfortable and has your family slash pets in it. So on and so forth. My house is my favorite place. Just as it should be. Unless you're my mam who gets a bit nutty if she doesn't aimlessly wander outside each week. I'm a bit of both. I really love to be at home. Would be there 23 hours a day if I could. But I also need to get some fresh air or sun whenever it's sunny or I'll be a bit sad and slow for the entire day. If I just go out for a short walk I feel great. Doesn't have to be hours long. Just 15 to 30 minutes is perfect end up having way more energy that way. I'm sick a lot less often. The kids are doing school entirely from home, so they don't bring crap home like they used to. This has definitely been my healthiest winter ever, right? I usually get bronchitis or pneumonia every winter no matter what. This is the first winter in my entire life I haven't had so much as a cold or a sniffle knock on wood. Me too. I'm asthmatic. Super sick twice a year. A couple colds. Persistent cough for a month. This year. No sick days. Finding out that not everyone needs to trudge for over an hour or more to get their job 5 days a week. That it's possible to work from home perfectly fine. Edit. Yes. I know not everyone can work from home. Some people have to go in. This is why I specifically stated not everyone. 
Also thanks for the awards. C. Commuting should get way better even for people who don't stay permanent WFH. If a large number of companies switch to that the road should become way less congested and people who commute will probably spend much less time stuck in traffic. I've driven to work every day this whole time. What used to be 55 to 75 minutes each way is a consistent 25 to 30. At the very beginning of the pandemic, I used to go for rides and the roads were completely empty. It was so creepy. That's not something that ever happens here. Now we are back to overflowing rush hours. It's like everyone went back to work already. My employer now knows for sure that working from home is completely doable and really doesn't fuck up productivity. I've also learned that I like going into the office once or twice a week just to break up the monotony of working from home all the time. I agree with both. I miss the social aspect of the office. Just me at home. So being cooped up so long is getting to me. My last full time. Obligated. Long story. Job I literally had to sit in my office and twiddle my thumbs for 8 hours and then head home. It was rare that I interacted with anyone in the offices around me. Those kinds of jobs sound great in theory but get old very quickly. I'm working one of them now. Had to change jobs when COVID hit. Happy to have a paycheck. But this shit is boring. I can mouth obscenities at people and they don't have a clue. This is my absolute favorite thing. And if I double up on the masks, I can mumble under my breath and they don't hear it. Soft spoken people happiness. Lol. I'm terrified that when this is behind us, I'm going to forget and mouth things. As if people can't see me. I live in S Florida, so I've faced this battle with sunglasses many times before. Contactless delivery. This better stick around after the pandemic. Imagine the people they would lose if they stopped doing it. Gotta be here to stay. My wife loves the pandemic because she gets to work from home. So no more commuting to work. She has basically gotten back 2 hours of her day. Nice. Lucky for her. Office work from home is much more practical and financially better. Spending time with my dog. Dogs are the real winners of the pandemic. I can't believe our dogs all got together and engineered a worldwide pandemic to get what they've always wanted. Dogs would never do something that evil or well planned. This was cats. As if cats would ever want us home to interrupt their evil plans. My 14 year old dog passed away last July. Our whole family had been working slash schooling from home full time starting in March. So we all got to love on her and care for her full time for her last months. Same. My childhood dog passed away October 2020, had a stroke, and he suddenly couldn't walk or eat or drink. He was already skinnier due to his lack of appetite, so we decided to put him down. I think of him every day, and I think my other dog misses him too. This, my dog suffered from dementia and was deaf, so I made sure to give him 100% of my time, take him for walks, and cuddle him, even though he wasn't aware of me anyway. Even a month before he was put down he could walk for KMS with me, but then he lost some weight, didn't want to eat, so we had to change his food. He had a massive stroke and got paralyzed because of that. He even wasn't able to blink, just non-stop barking. It was scary as hell, but because of lockdown I found out immediately and was able to get him to a vet in 2 hours. Unfortunately the test results were really bad, so I decided to do what was best for him. After 16 amazing years it was his time to go. I'm glad that lockdown happened, because I could spend his 6 last months taking care of him basically 24 over 7. Thank you for giving him 16 wonderful years. I have now learned that I don't lack time to do things. Just motivation. I have all the time in the world to get in shape and learn something new a year later, and I've made much less progress than I should have given the amount of free time. HMM. I've lost interest in all my hobbies and gotten fat instead of learning anything new. So it sounds like you're killing it. Depression. You've made progress in depression. Nah man I'm for sure not depressed, but I'm going down the same path. I'm loving it. Maybe shit for my health but still. I'm liking my year long break from existence. Southern California traffic. Freeways basically wide open for the last year. My caution and anxiety about people 
can be successfully hidden by the pandemic. I'm not forced to be overly social and can more successfully avoid crowded areas. I'm worried my mild agoraphobia before the pandemic is going to be a bit more severe after this is all over. Last year was supposed to be the year I got out more and put myself in more of those situations I don't wanna be in. I can confirm it has just gotten worse. Look at it this way. Things aren't going to go back to normal overnight. It's gonna be a gradual transition. You will have time to ease yourself back into the practice of occasionally exiting your comfort zone. You won't suddenly be hit over the head with it. And you will do great. If you are new to Tattletale TV, please subscribe. We have new videos every day. Stay tuned for more coming up next.